You know, tuned into the trading day, some kind of a weakness creeping into the markets in the last 10 minutes, but uh, nonetheless quiet in trade, down by about three tenths of a percent on the Nifty right now. Mahiresh Joshi from Angel Broking in our studios uh, today. Mahiresh, uh, good to have you here at uh, BTVI. What's your reading of the markets? Uh, do you think that the selling may be overdone for now? Are we looking at some kind of a support building over here, possibly uh, go up uh, going forward? Because you haven't seen an adverse reaction to the Fed move. Of course, uh, the rate uh, hike was priced in. But going forward, what's the what's the call? So after on the punch, uh, largely as you correctly pointed out, uh, the rate hike of 25 bips largely in the price, uh, and uh, the bond sell-off that you probably witnessed among emerging pack uh, also factored that in. So to a certain extent, uh, the markets uh, had that fear factor going for them with demonetization and uh, the expected moves that Fed will do. So to a large extent, again, I think it's going to come down to how earnings pan out. And again, the markets have largely factored that in as well. Q3 earnings expected to be extremely soft and tepid. Why it might very well extend into Q4 as well. So again, it's going to be very, very stock specific. Uh, the markets can very well pull back uh, 100 or 200 points on the Nifty from here. But again, I think that range for the markets will stay unless we see some conclusive evidence uh, of earnings bottoming out, which you don't see in Q3, Q4. So I think it's going to be more stock specific at this point of time. Right, uh, Mahiresh, uh, broader call on the markets for 2017, uh, more of a sell-on rally or a buy-on dips? Uh, so tough call to make at this point of time. Uh, obviously, one uh, assumes, as I said, Q3, Q4 downgrades uh, have largely uh, started coming in. So to that extent, I think if the normalization process uh, starts after a few weeks, uh, my own sense is that FI18, FI19 earnings as we start rolling over in the next two months uh, should start appearing better. Now the entire thesis that the market was working on in terms of consumer demand coming back significantly with good monsoons, pay commission recommendations, with the demonetization, I think that uh, bit uh, has gone out at least for the next couple of quarters. The banking credit again is expected to grow extremely soft. Uh, uh, so to that extent, I think the two legs uh, that the market were hinging upon, I think, are expected to grow extremely slowly. Uh, so I think the recovery might well get extended uh, to the second half of FI18, because again, the CAPEX cycle, specifically on the private side, is going to get postponed as well. Uh, so again, I think markets uh, should be in a positive uh, territory over the next 12 to 15 months. But it's going to be a very, very slow and gradual process, I think. It's going to be more stocks in action rather than markets moving up significantly. Absolutely flat uh, on a one-year perspective. In fact, year-to-date uh, on the benchmarks. Uh, Robert Parker, Senior Advisor at uh, Credit Suisse, uh, also joins us uh, from uh, London. Robert, good to have you on a day like this. Markets seem to have uh, taken the Fed hike in their stride. Of course, uh, going into the event, 98% of investors had already priced in a 25 bips rate hike. Uh, I think is a long-term attractive sector. Fair point, uh, Robert. We'll leave it at that, but appreciate you joining us uh, from London with your reading of the global picture as also your outlook on India. That's uh, Robert uh, Parker, Senior Advisor at uh, Credit Suisse. Uh, Mahiresh, apologies for keeping you waiting, but would you agree with that uh, perspective? Has this uh, demonetization disruption uh, really thrown up some interesting opportunities in the markets? Anything worth looking at after this correction? Well, absolutely. Again, I think, uh, as, as Robert was mentioning, uh, infrastructure as a theme is something that uh, and take the forefront for uh, the government going forward. The budget is going to be a key event in terms of what outlay actually starts coming through. So in that sense, I think infrastructure can be broadly divided, both onto the power side as well as on the road side, where the government focus uh, has been very encouraging so far and is expected to be so in the coming fiscal as well. Secondly, I think rural-oriented themes is something that the government is going to pursue post-demonetization, and the budget is going to lay extra emphasis on these sectors as well. I think the budget uh, in the gone fisc in the in the fiscal gone by probably had allocated significant amounts to the rural sector. So my own sense is that continued focus uh, on these sectors will very well continue. Third, I think the gas transmission companies, I think they, they're not affected by demonetization in any significant manner. So whether you take the city gas distribution guys, whether you take the core gas distribution companies, I think these are the companies uh, where the earnings might still sustain going forward. And fourth, I think even on the power ancillary front, any, any companies which have uh, balance of plant, uh, erection of uh, power equipment, power transformers, I think these companies will benefit with uh, larger orders coming through, margins improving, work capital constraints going down, and that leading to effective uh, operating leverage on the balance sheet and return ratios, uh, specifically return on capital employed improving in a significant manner.
Okay, point. Uh, Mohit, uh, apologies for uh, uh, keeping you also on wait, but uh, it's uh, it's not 3.50 now, it's 3.20, but uh, let's get your trading ideas in. Sure, so I do like uh, IGL, it's seen a good up move in trade today. This is a buy with a stop loss at levels of 8.97 for targets of 9.25 to 9.30, trading at an all-time high, so it's a really good chart. Even Hindustan Zinc is one that's looking good on the chart, seen a nice up move. Next level here at 295, it's a buy with a stop loss at 280. And lastly, Shilpa Medica, it's a, a small cap or mid cap stock, it's looking good on the charts, again trading at all time highs, seen a good up move today, next levels are 750 here, buy it with a stop loss around 710. Tire stocks are gaining momentum in trade right now, so pull up an Apollo tires, uh, pull up a JK tire, pull up a Seat, all of these counters are doing well. TVS Sri Chakra was in focus yesterday on the back of uh, earnings, uh, any call on some of these names Mohit? Uh, well, Apollo Tires is looking good on the charts and this can perhaps uh, move higher uh, towards levels of maybe 210 next. So it's a buy with a stop loss at levels of 199 but have a tight stop loss because broadly the market's not looking the best and this is one of the frontline stocks so we might see some kind of correction here. Mahirish, autos, demonetization fully priced in uh, any names that you're looking at in that space? No, again, I think if you divide uh, the auto universe into two wheelers, four wheelers and the auto ancillaries, uh, two wheelers have seen the brunt uh, with volumes going down from November. You're not really sure on how December volumes will uh, pan out, but the expectations and management commentaries is, is that the bounce back has uh, probably started happening post uh, couple of weeks uh, since demonetization took place. Uh, so largely again I think uh, if one follows an approach for the auto universe I think four wheelers as a space is something that I'll still continue to like. Two wheelers is something that I've liked but again I think I'll wait for numbers to actually start coming through and see an impact of the degrowth of volumes both in terms of uh, what has gone down across their variants and the pricing pressures that you might probably see on that. So four wheelers as a pack, specifically something like Maruti Suzuki, I think it's something uh, which has done exceptionally well. The kind of platforms that they've got, Brezza has done well, Paneno has done well. The indirect exposure in terms of their forex uh, component has come down significantly. And what uh, earnings estimates one had envisaged at the beginning of the fiscal had moved up significantly when the stock was trading close to 5,800 odd levels. But the earnings estimates and the valuations have come down as well. For the auto ancillary pack, I think I'll be a little bit more selective because the replacement markets is going to feel the brunt in terms of demonetization and coming back out of, uh, out of the rut, I think is going to take at least a quarter if not more. So again, I think auto ancillaries as a pack is somewhere where I'll be a little bit careful at this point of time. But Ford Wheeler specifically, Maruti is where I'll be optimistic about at this point of time. How do you place uh, technology? There is the rupee tailwind uh, that will probably only intensify going forward from here and on the other hand, Trump talking uh, visa misuse, uh, protectionism rising across the globe, companies having to increase local hires which is an additional cost as also the guidance cut coming in from NASCOM and the large cap majors. So I think the guidance cuts which have come through for uh major part of uh, IT companies are largely factored in the price. Uh, uh, the guidance uh, in terms of uh, dollar revenues I think is expected to stay muted. Q3, Q4 traditionally we got as a bunch of, and again I think uh, my own sense is that you will get better entry points uh, at least on the larger cap names. Uh, utilization levels have more or less remained constant uh, but going forward uh, as uh, Trump policies start uh, coming through in the open, I think once he starts uh, formulating these policies, I think once uh, that happens, we'll come to know what is the exact financial impact on these companies. So largely, again, I think I'll wait out for results, uh, specifically Q3, the management commentaries thereof. You've already seen huge amount of uh, discretionary spending getting postponed from the client side. If there are any hints uh, on, on that uh, reoccurring or, or getting postponed by a quarter or two, that definitely has a, has a say in terms of how earnings will pan out. So I think I'll wait for numbers to come through, but yes, I think large cap IT in my opinion looks interesting because valuations have become very, very compelling at this point of time. Mohit, you were talking about uh, some of these uh, mid cap IT names uh, yesterday. Emphasis I believe was uh, on your buy list. That stock doing well in trade today, sitting at the highest point, up by about 3% right now. Anything that you like, again, from the mid cap space or even some of these large caps which are doing well today? Well, apart from emph emphasis, even Geometric is actually looking good. It's got a better chart. It's trading at all-time highs. Even that was a buy yesterday, and it's holding up a percent odd higher. I think we can see levels of 265 here next, and one can move their stop loss to levels of uh, 248 from uh, the lower levels from yesterday and continue trading long on this. Uh, another one that was also on the buy radar uh, was uh, Mindtree. 
that was it. Uh, it's already moved up smartly from the buy levels when we generated, but still there is further upside on this towards levels of maybe uh, 540 on the upside. So it's a positional trade. Buy it with a deep stop around levels of 490, and you could see level targets of 520 to 530 in the coming few days. Sun Pharma, the top loser in trade today, down by about four and a half percent. Remember, you had a couple of brokerage notes uh, out on this one yesterday, talking about uh, uh, halol observations, saying that they're not too serious in nature, mainly observational, and that that resolution should come about and be a booster for the stock. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, Sun Pharma remains weak. And Mayesh, that's uh, the one I want to come to you with. Uh, obviously, the halol resolution. What are your views on it? Is it uh, more mere observational stuff, or could there be something more serious over there? And be the increased competition especially in the US generics market are we uh, discounting that already or could that be a pressure point going forward I think, I think uh, to answer your question I think the halol facility I think uh, though observation in nature at this point of time I think the delay in terms of approval is going to take two more quarters so the analyst view was by April it should be up and running and uh, it is going to take at least two more quarters after that uh, again, I think if one really accounts for the EPS estimates, uh, we, we had envisaged an EPS growth of almost 26 odd percent over the next two years, close to that 35 rupees mark for Sun Pharma, and that probably gets uh, downgraded a tad bit. So I think if you take a 10 percent hit on that EPS, and EPS coming close to 32 odd rupees, uh, with site transfers taking place from the Halol facility, I think it's going to still take uh, a while before fresh approvals start taking place. Uh, so don't top line my group around 10, 11 percent on a compounded basis over the next couple of years. The earnings hit because of Halol uh, can be to the tune of 10-11%. Uh, now when it comes to resolution, I think, uh, for, for the pharma space as a whole, uh, I think you've seen pricing pressures probably come through over the past few quarters as well. So I think those pricing intensity pressures will continue on pharma companies' balance sheets. And to that extent, I think the earnings estimates are going to get downgraded to a certain bit. Uh, huge, uh, I mean, whole host of pharma companies have large application spending. Sun Pharma 142 A&D applications, Lupin's got 144 A&D applications, Glenmark is expected to launch a few key drugs uh, in the U.S. market. You're seeing Aurobindo expected to launch 2025 injectables into the U.S. market as well, which is a high margin business. But largely, again, I think uh, the earnings downgrades uh, are largely factored in. Now, one is really waiting what Trump does with its policies again as for the IT sector. If he's doing some amount of pricing pressures on that count, I think further downgrades can come through. But again, I think from the large cap names, Lupin is something that I'll continue to like. They've got an addressable market size in terms of FTFs of close to 12, 30 billion odd dollars. First mover advantage in Japan, close to 12, 30 billion odd dollars over the next three to four years, and a strong footing on the domestic market. So my own sense is Lupin can comfortably post an EPS, even with pricing pressures of close to 68 to 70 odd rupees, which makes it a very, very interesting prospective candidate at this point of time. So that's a detailed outlook on some of those uh, pharma names. Uh, of course, uh, Mohit, uh, let's just get a chart check on a couple of those names. Sun Pharma, the top loser in trade today, down almost 4.5%. Also something from the mid-cap space uh, like a walk heart. Well, in terms of Sun Pharma, we're seeing a big down move in trade today. It's broken below levels of 660, which was a reasonably strong support zone. I think we can perhaps slide lower <coughs> towards levels of 640, 630. And if one's, one can go short with a stop loss around levels of 660, uh, Broadly, the chart is still negative. As far as work from our goes, there's really no trend in here. It's, it's holding out in trade, trading sideways around the 690 zones. I think it's best avoided right now. Right, uh, Mayuresh, Mohit, just hold your thoughts, uh, 90 seconds to go before we wind down trade. Uh, so it's been a choppy uh, day of trade, a 100 point range, that's the kind of trade that we've had and opened up gap down, saw some recovery, failed to hold 8200 and then some selling coming in in the last hour of trade. So around 8150 for the moment on the Nifty. Axis Bank, this is the one that uh, picked up momentum in the last few minutes of trade, so up by about 2.5%. And then of course uh, you've had the IT stocks that have been buoyant all day long, so TCS, HCL Tech, uh, Infosys, uh, all of these counters doing well in trade. OMGC making a bounce back uh, today. This was one of the weaker pockets in trade yesterday, up by about a percent and a half. You have also had uh, Power Grid that's done well. Bajaj Auto launched a new bike today, Domino, to take on uh, Royal Enfield's dominance in that market. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the trend that develops over there in the coming months. Apart from that, you've had M&M that's done well today. Hero Moto also in positive territory as also a Maruti Suzuki, which is on my ratios preferred buy list. Uh, from the banking universe, uh, not bad on the bank nifty front, uh, holding up by about four tenths of a percent. So really one of the pockets that's held out in the markets along with the IT pack. Axis Bank, like I said, the top gainer over there, but uh, Bank of Baroda, Canada Bank, SBI and Indusind Bank, all of these banks have done well in trade today. 
pockets uh, that have been weak in the markets today. You've had uh, Sun Pharma, the top loser in trade, uh, uh, down by about 4%. Tata Motors and Tata Motors DVR are losing by about 2.5% as well. NTPC on the back foot, uh, Grasim and Ultratech uh, joining it over there. Ambuja Cement too is weak in trade today as also Bosch uh, which was one of the gainers in trade yesterday. ITC, Bharti Infratel, uh, Bharti Airtel, Dr. Reddy is uh, also weak in trade today as also an Asian Paints which is really swinging between gains and uh, lows uh, on trade last few days. But uh, on the market uh, print, uh, not uh, too much of an adverse reaction to that Fed move, uh, most of it was priced in, opened up gap down but uh, didn't really go down significantly lower from there but nonetheless a weak day of trade uh, on the markets coming in below that 8200 mark sliding to about 8150 in trade. Mohit, uh, just a call uh, on the market trend that we saw today, uh, you've, you've been saying that we've been range bound, we've uh, held into that range. We are entering uh, second half of December, volumes will possibly thin out so likely to be similar moves for the rest of the month as well. Well, the call on the market trend is there's no real trend. We're broadly between 8,050 on the downside and 8,250 to 8,300 on the upside. The Bank Nifty correspondent levels are 18,150 on the downside and maybe 18,600 to 18,700 on the upside. There's really a lack of momentum. There's no real strong momentum on the upper downside. The bias being mildly negative, nonetheless, to take an index call and you know take open positions on the index would not be a smart idea. You'd rather trade stock-specific action where there are clear trends, either on the mid-cap or reasonably large-cap positions. Mayesh, uh, two uh, spaces to talk to you about, cement and oil and gas. So where would your preferences lie in these uh, names? So selectively, I think the structural storage bunch for cement still remains intact. Uh, what has happened with demonetization is that the volume growth uh, and the prospects for certain markets uh, seem to be going down. Uh, so in that sense itself, I think you've already seen price corrections happening across regions. Uh, and again, I think that is going to have an impact in terms of how demand shapes up. Now, 60 to 70 percent of the demand comes in from real estate. And if real estate is going to take a hit in a big manner over the next two to three quarters, to say the least, uh, no pre-sales expected or no new launches expected to come from developers, uh, at least at this point of time, because they'll want to dispose of their inventory and probably look at their books again. I think that is going to have an incremental negative demand in terms of volume picking up significantly. Now, the initial estimate was that the utilization level should start picking up significantly from 70-75% to 80-85% over the next couple of years. That argument probably takes a back seat at this point of time. So structurally, I think the story still remains extremely strong, but there will be better price entry points uh, for the cement sector. So I think one has to be very, very selective within large cap and mid caps, uh, but wait for better entry levels over the next uh, month or so. Within the oil and gas space, I think with the kind of moment that you've seen on Brent, uh, you've already seen significant movement happening on the upstream companies. Now, if one really assumes that Brent stays between $55 to $60 and Kupi staying between $68 to $69 to a dollar, my own sense is that uh, the markets have factored in in terms of pricing for the upstream companies in a fair and reasonable manner. For the downstream companies, I think Q3 numbers will have inventory gains coming through because it happens with the lag effect of buying crude and the realization of crude after a month. Uh, so in that sense itself, inventory gain should be there on the balance sheet. A large part of Delta in terms of earnings with crude coming down over the past four quarters has got played out. Working capital has gone down. You've seen significant reduction of debt, which has given point uh, expectations for management to increase capex and increase their refining capacities. So I think downstream companies still have the delta in terms of the marketing margins. HPCL, IOC with new capacities coming up uh, should have better GRMs uh, getting posted over the next couple of quarters. So the downstream companies is somewhere that I'll stay with the OMC pack. Upstream, in my opinion, I think fairly valued with assumptions of $55 for the better part of uh, the next six months and the rupees staying between 69 to 70 rupees, as I said, against a dollar. Mahiraj, we have you in our studios. I uh, can't really let you go before you share value ideas for 2017. If you have any preferences, it can be three stocks, it can be five stocks, but uh, what are some of the value ideas that you can share with our viewers? So as I said, I think within the power transformer space, uh, something like a transformers rectifiers or a wall tam, I think seems very, very interesting at this point of time. What you've seen with these companies over the past two years is that orders had become extremely muted. The working capital constraints had gone down. The margins had come down to as low as 4 to 5 percent. The return on capital employed had come down to 4 or 5 percent. But with new schemes coming through from the central government side, the expectations of order flows to the tune of 15, 16,000 odd crores over the next two years is not ruled out. The straight transformer boards, uh, along with the straight electricity boards, 
are expected to give out orders in a significant manner because that is the number one agenda in terms of the government's priority over the next couple of years. What this does is it improves margins significantly. It helps improving ROCEs back to those double digits in the next two years. And with competition coming out uh, because of uh, GST as well as the new BIS certification norms, a whole host of unorganized players get out of the industry as a whole. So I think return ratios improve which creates uh, greater traction for earnings to improve. So I think these are two stocks that I probably like for the power transformer space. In the similar fashion, I think as I was mentioning about city gas distribution companies, IGL can still have value going ahead. My own sense is that the deep under penetration that you've seen both in terms of CNG and PNG should start playing out more meaningfully. Taxis are expected to get converted to the tune of 30 to 40,000 uh, over the next couple of years. You're probably looking at a huge order in terms of buses coming through which are ready for conversion. Gas prices have come down to $2.8 uh, per MBTU, which is going to create a huge synergy in terms of cost. And though gas stations have significantly increased in terms of outlay, the capital expenditure that uh, the company is embarking upon will have larger depreciation play through. And the margins and spreads might come down from 6.6 .6 SCM that we've seen over the past few quarters to 6.2, 6.3, but the volumes will give it the leverage benefit. The third value idea that I probably like from the power space is uh, Technoelectric. It's a very uh, niche company. My own sense is with the balance of parts specifically on the power machinery and equipment side playing out meaningfully, this company is well poised to deliver larger earnings growth. It's sold a part of its wind business. The expectation is that if it's able to sell off the wind business totally over the next few quarters, that will create a huge amount of earnings potential. 2,600 crores in terms of its EPC order book. Margins expected to stay between 14 and 15 percent. Cash flows that they yield from the EPC business is extremely positive. And my own sense is that the earnings can improve significantly from the current level over the next two to three years. So Technoelectric is something that I'll continue. If one gets its own declines, I think this is a brilliant value pick over the next couple of years. Transformers and Rectifiers, uh, IGL and Technoelectric, those are the three stocks on Mayuresh's uh, buy list. Uh, Mayuresh, appreciate you giving us your time. As always, uh, we'll connect with you soon to get some more ideas in. On that note, uh, completely out of time on this uh, edition of the Trading Day. Mohit, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll uh, take a very short break, uh, come back with rising stars on the other side. Uh, today, we'll connect.